Hello and welcome, I am Marumba. thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our Golden Horde campaign, the Rites of the Horde, in the European Universal Four. So we're, uh, we're playing this live on Twitch tonight, because of reasons, and uh, where we left off last, we were at war with the Oirat, still are at war with the Oirat. You can see that the Timurids are about to get wrecked by crazy, crazy amounts of Persian Separatists. Um, I'm getting the impression Persia is going to be pretty strong soon, uh, them Persian Separatists are going crazy. In fact, if I had to guess, I'd say that, uh, that, does that look to you like maybe half the country's almost sieged? Is the Timurids? Ah, they're at war. Okay, so while they're at war, they can't get broken by rebels, but it's very likely that some of these provinces will start to flip one by one. And, uh, either that or they'll end up at peace and then they'll, they'll just end up getting broken and then all of this land is going to go to Persia. Persia's going to gain a ton of territory. So we're going to have to continuously be buying down their, uh, their liberty desire. I do remember a couple episodes... Ita has just cheered. You for hype <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, so anyway, uh, <laughs> Persia. Um, I remember just a couple episodes I was complaining about how this whole like 100 development threshold, like these these breakpoints, are really dumb. And uh, there was a development diary or a, a tweet from Johan or something saying that in the next patch it's all going to scale based on development. So it's like, yay, sweet! It's <laughs> exactly exactly what I was saying. Is is a better idea, a better system of doing it. All right, let's go ahead and unpause the game here. Moldavia's done stuff. Medri Bari. Stuff is changing. People are doing things. Military access from Uzbek. Haha, no. Icon, we have ill news. A leader has left us. He hasn't died, he's left us. They make it sound like he had a choice in the matter. How do we feel about our current leader? A 422? Eh, eight monarch points. Our heir is 513. Nine monarch points, not really that much better. I'm not too happy about the cruel modifier, but I really don't want to take an extra stab hit. Still, we can increase our character's death chance by just turning him into a ruler without even making him lead armies. Um, unless I'm mistaken. I suppose, I suppose I could be incorrect about this. Primitive AI is now hosting my stream, apparently. Anyway, um... I'm 90% sure this is still correct. When you have a ruler, uh, based on their age, they have a death pulse, right? They have a, a chance to die. It doesn't tell you what the number is, but it is the exact same formula that is used for every other guy. This yearly death chance thing, right? And then there's a separate dice roll for death for military leaders, um, which is also increased while they're in combat. So just being a military leader increases your chance of death. And so we could potentially try to make our guy die a little bit more often or frequently. And get rid of that negative two unrest trait would be quite nice. Cruel is useful. It opens up new dialogue options. Well, that sounds fun, but it still sucks, man. It sucks for this national unrest. An AI ruler with cruel would want less autonomy for the oppressed. And, uh, love to raise and plunder. That sounds like me. I mean, I have to admit. Let's grab this guy. Suffering a little bit of attrition over here now. Let's put this guy in charge here instead. We were doing some looting. The loot is gone now. We've got plenty of flat terrain over here. Looking for my simple terrain map mode. Where did it go? It is- this is the simple terrain map mode. It's just- it's just overlaid with this thing and I can't see as clearly as I would have expected. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's sort of nearby. How's the supply here? 16, 16. Let's go over to this one. It's not as much loot, but it's uh, a little bit safer. And we'll have you guys head over this way. Okay, so we're going to try to put down this rebellion, and we're basically just waiting for the Oirat to get down to low enthusiasm so we can get a decent peace deal. And you look to be trying to catch off, catch, catch this, this army off guard. Our relations have stopped improving with Sabir. We'll come back for now. See if we can negotiate a peace deal. Also, there was an army over this way, amazingly. Korchin. Korchin, how did you do this? How did you get from over here to the west side of my country? How, how does this happen? Hmm? I want to know. Let your access from Iraq. I'm going to say no, and then we're going to go inspect you. Uh, Iraq is starting to form up. Interesting. Cool. Good and fine. Seems great. <clears throat> Fantastic to see that our weakened army, our weakened units, are actually deploying on the edges as they properly should. So there was a... we're on the beta patch, or, or the hotfix has been released, I can't remember which one it was, but that has finally been fixed after weeks of ridiculousness. Something going on with Galray. Someone has asked me that I should, I should try to ask for the maps of the Ottomans. Request their maps. Hmm. Apparently you can't do that while we're at war, because... This is, this is, that would be crazy. For reasons unknown. We're unallowed to do that. Alright, so we put down these rebels. 
Our mighty fortress uh, is under siege in Saratov. I think that's going to be a job for this army. They should be able to march back pretty safely. We will leave behind... Let's see, we got 20 regiments there. He's got uh, 12 plus 2, so it's only 15. Let's go ahead and just leave behind two of these infantry to start taking that province back. In the meantime, this army is suffering attrition, so it does need to get parsed or shrunk down a little bit. Let's grab a couple of the infantry. Pull them over there. Keep on looting. Okay. Genoa's fabricated claims on us. Still at medium enthusiasm. 13. A couple more battles in our favor, and we'll have it. I don't want to actually spend any of our prestige just yet trying to make Persia like us, but with this, this rebellion situation here, I'm going to have to go crazy on trying to buy them down. Um... Sabir is only at 59 with maxed out uh, relations. You are at uh, almost maxed out. Nizhny Novgorod. Actually loyal, finally. Sabir with zero regiments. Very nice. Ottomans, 179. We can do better than that. We've got uh, 55 trust, 17 favors. What have you done? Oh my god, he's actually carpet sieging. I don't think I've ever seen the AI do this. At least not in a long time. He, he's decided against it as I've retreated my army over here, but he was actually looking to carpet siege. Can you believe it? It's amazing. Good for him. That is remarkable. All right, our financial situation is a, a, a little bit bleak here. I'm wishing that I had done a longer recording session in one of my previous episodes. Because the Ottomans were giving me like six and a half ducats a month in war reps or uh, war subsidies, and then they were like, eh, never mind, we don't want to do that. If they, uh, <laughs> if they could have just sort of keep doing that, that'd be great. I mean, the Ottomans make like stupid amounts of money, don't they? Still. Mr. Ottoman makes 53 ducats a month. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's pretty good. Yeah, he's, uh, he almost makes as much as Ming. It's rather impressive. Could you give me like, I don't know, 10% of that, please? Pretty please. Like, I need the money. Looks like we'll be fine here to uh, to make it in time, although we are getting our loot bar crushed. Not nearly as significant as uh, it could be, I suppose. You are heading to Almadi. I'm probably after one of my vassal armies. I think we want to maybe fight him one more time in some planes if we can. We've got a 2-3 leader. We've got a 2-2 that we could pull upon, draw upon. Let's uh, park you guys up that way and we'll actually march this army down toward our vassal. Disney Novgorod is loyal. Let's see if we can get him to attach. Right now he's set to aggressive. Let's make him supportive and give him an attach. Uh, a couple attached targets. Make he, maybe hopefully keep him safe. Give him tree. No! Warriors do not read books. Yes, we do! Damn! I need this. We're trying to convert stuff right now. Oh, this is really painful. I was just going to put that pop-up in the corner and just forget about it for a while. <laughs> we need more time spent converting at full full speed here, please. All right, you have 303 liter. We don't want to cross that river, so we're going to head up this way first. No chance of him actually taking the capital yet. 32 war score, 15 enthusiasm for this guy. Relative strength of the alliance is a negative factor. It's going to get stronger. We might possibly, if we stack wipe this Scorchin army, might possibly be able to knock him out of the war. I'm not expecting it to happen, but maybe. Wallachia just got annexed. And the tribe's estate modifier is now gone. So, the tribes. We could support the tribes. We cannot raise a host because their loyalty is not high enough. Okay. It's at 49.09. Coming back up at 0 .08. So if we grant them a province and then do it, we could we could get some cheaper stuff. And a free general. Not a very good general, but we could do it. Yes, the old move the event to the corner tactic. It's a great one. Uh, <laughs> it's... It Hey, if Paradox, I mean, it's funny, in CK2, you actually, there's like a whole bunch of bad events that can happen, and you can't do that. It just isn't possible. So, um, I find it interesting that in EU4, you still can. Most of the time. Got Highlands down here. He's heading to... Yashilkul. I guess we're gonna hang out in Taraz. Alright, we've engaged the army of Korchin. What do we got here? We rolled a 7 in the first fire phase, followed it up with a 1! Urus, the loser. He is fighting a battlefield medic, reinforced speed, plus 33%. That's pretty solid. Nice 0 Urus, very impressive. A 1 and a 0 in the first shock phases. Axe, that's just abs absolutely atrocious. 
We lost 4,000... Okay, the battle's over. Just because I have this thing open doesn't mean you need to keep making that sound effect game. <laughs> Why is it continuing to make this noise? Anyway, he lost 4,000 men. We lost actually more than that. That was a horrible battle. He is retreating to Canada. And, uh... We'll arrive in Canada. I don't believe he's retreating. He's gonna be able to shatter well and far away. One argument for having forts is that uh, you can actually trap armies more often. Unfortunately, that's not gonna happen for us just yet. You are trying to get to Kochar. I feel like if we don't try to pass some of these, catch some of these guys out, it's gonna be a waste. He's heading to Talos, which is Drylands. Drylands is flat terrain. We should take that fight with our better general. 34 war score. Are we ticking? Yes, we are. We're at 10 exactly right now. Uh, thank you, Apple Lion, for your subscription. I apologize for being distracted. Um, that does tend to happen when I'm playing for YouTube recordings. All right. He is now trying to peace out. It's a good sign. I'm guessing that after he goes to Kochar, he's going to come into one of these flat terrain provinces, so I'd like to maybe pick him off. Maybe in Almaty. Tunis no longer considers Provence to be a rival. He'll be there on the 8th, that's tomorrow. Let's see where you want to go after that. Are you going to... you going to move around much? No? You're going to let me go beat up on some of your, uh... Some of your weak little allies here, perhaps. We've got the larger army heading to Hopescar. Now to Nerim. Okay, he's coming down into Chewy. He is the war leader, so we want to actually go ahead and engage his army. He's now locked. Let's go engage him here in the steppe. Okay, there's that stab hit, fi finally fired. I am Lord7, thank you for your subscription. Um, we just finished our conversion on that second, as it happened. Was that our mission? No, our mission is to get our prestige up. <clears throat> Very concerned here about the money that we're losing. 1130 some ducats in debt. That army... Seventy percent of the American separatists. All right, this fight. Ow! Oh, wow! Holy crap! We're actually not fast enough to catch him. I gotta admit, I'm rather surprised. Maybe the next province over. He's got. He's a two-three-three. We are crossing a river. What? Excuse me. There's no river between these two provinces. What are you talking about, game? A river flows between this province and Talos. Yeah, I can see very clearly that there's a river right there, and yet we're getting this, there's a potential crossing into, like, what? You're crazy, game. There's no river. Nonsense, I say. Alright, come on, Ulan. Or rather, sorry, Urus. Do a good job in the shock phase. Come on, not, uh, it's not a nine, man. I need nines in the shock phase, damn it. A zero. You know what? I'm gonna murder you in your sleep. That is totally what we're gonna do today. I mean, we're killing a whole lot more than they are, because we're slightly... Eh, we're equal width as they are. God damn, all these zeros and ones in the shock phase! What in the hell is happening here? That's just downright embarrassing! Jesus, man! How bad are you? Just... just, just downright embarrassing. That's what it is. Can you believe it? Alright, we're gonna go for another engagement with Mongolia up here. I can't believe it. I mean, seriously, in the last two major battles we've had with them, we have rolled... five... rolls of one or less. One or fewer. I remember distinctly in the battle in our capital, we had... the first two shock phases were a zero and a one. And then just now here, we had like a zero... A one and a one, or something like that. It's just, it's horrible. Just absolutely ludicrous. What are we doing on force limit? 44 to 47. We're not going to consolidate um, any troops, because that's silly when you're a horde, but uh, we are going to pull these troops off and have them do some raiding instead of trying to participate on the front line. 
These 19 troops are gonna go this way. Did you guys read about the change that they're, they announced for the next patch? That they're gonna have, um... There's no longer going to be uh, combat width restrictions or reductions based on terrain. That's getting removed completely. Even mountains are gonna have full combat width. Very, very interesting change. Cossack aggression. Moving quickly by boat or on horseback, the Cossacks of the steppe are very adept raiders. Several such raids have lately laid waste to our countryside and even major cities some way from our borders. Once a raid has been executed, these plunderers retreat back behind the borders of our neighboring countries, uh, counties, countries, as quickly as they came. Both the blank and our blank have interests in the affected areas, and both groups now demand that we do something. Nice. I guess we say yes, let's do this one. The Lithuanian response has been to send some monetary compensation for the raids of their Cossack subjects, which have made up for the damage to property. They also claim that they have brought the guilty parties to justice. If we could only believe that. So the Lithuanian Cossacks, apparently. Alright, we are going for through this province. We need to we need to do another flat train engagement. Come on, I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna give you one more chance here, Ursus. Or Urus. If you don't roll well, I'm going to hire a new general and we're never gonna put you in charge of an army again. You cannot send a missionary to a province that you do not control and own. Seriously? I have failed to get these back, apparently. Totally forgot about them. I would love to be doing conversions here. Sitan Vendel, thank you for your subscription using Twitch Prime. Appreciate it. Costs you nothing and it benefits me greatly. It's fantastic. If you already have Twitch Prime, that is. Peace offer from the Oirat. I'm not going to peace out till they're down to low. Just not going to happen. Okay, we have a few other provinces we can go for here before. Okay, he's going to take back Obscar. 13th, 15th. Heading to Chuguchak. Chuguchak. Alright. I need to decide what provinces I'm going to take in this war. And the main thing I'm looking for right now is uh, raisable provinces. Also, one thing I need to pay attention to is that uh, I talked about this before we started recording this episode. The Renaissance is now officially present in Sarai. And we don't have a pop up saying we can embrace an institution. And I'm guessing the reason for that is we don't have the money. I'm 90% sure we do have enough of our land has adopted it now that Sarai has has picked it up. Yep, it's going to cost us 445 gold to do so. The problem is, we don't have a lot of money. The other problem is, if we don't do it now, this other damn institution, colonialism, is going to pop up very, very soon here. And when it does, we're going to end up paying even more tech cost. So we have to do it soon. You know? I think we're like one more battle away from being able to do something. Go engage him in Chukuchak. They actually have a surprisingly large number of men. There's 55,000 troops out there. We have 50,000 of our own. He's now down to low enthusiasm. 10 war, war exhaustion. Alright, let's see what we can do here. I want provinces with raisable territory here. Let's just do this. I'm going to select everything since it's doing this annoying thing where it restricts what I can actually select and cannot select. These are all provinces I'd be willing to consider. And then we're going to start by overextension. We're going to go drop the ones that are only 3%. 3% means 3 development, which means no raising. And 4 development... It is Diplo. That's what we would get from this. So I'm not really particularly interested in that one either. The 5s and 6s are all fine. Okay, so that's as deep as in we are... Uh, as deep in as we are. Demanding Taraz without occupying any forts in the area. Seriously, this, this op occupation of Uxend doesn't count? Demanding Taraz. I am amazed. I would have assumed here that this fort, being that it is involved in the war that we are in, would have counted. as occupying a fort in the area. Very weird. Okay, looks like we're not done with this war yet. We're gonna have to occupy their damn...
capital for it, aren't we? That is horrible. Crap. That's really strange. Why why doesn't that not count? Capital forts do count as a fort. It should count. It should totally count. But it's not. Okay, um, alternatively, since we are having issues with money, we could just go for war reps, cash, and, uh... I like how the suggested demand is less money that I could actually ask for. That feels so worth- worth- not worth much. Did not feel worthwhile. Make him return some territory to Uzbek. Don't really want to do that. Can't demand any provinces. We could enforce military access for some more, for some prestige, and then just cancel it, the relationship. I honestly might do this. I'm going to take a break now, and then in between episodes here, we'll think about it a little bit more and decide what we want to do. We'll see. All right, I'll see you again in the next episode. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.